Hi everyone, my name is Russell Kent Nichols and I'm a wedding filmmaker from the UK. Today I am here in Madrid with Wex to show you how I make a wedding film. So I've been shooting weddings for over five years now and a big part of my wedding filmmaking business is in elopements. An elopement is just the couple, so there's not usually guests. Sometimes there might be a celebrant or a registrar, but the main thing that I love about elopements is being able to tell the couple's story. So actually, as an aspiring wedding filmmaker, they are really easy to start with. You're concentrating mostly just on the couple's story, um, the, the more kind of finer details like their accessories and things, and the couple portrait session, which is my absolute personal favorite. So today I'm gonna to be telling you about my favorite ways of capturing the couple from start to finish, from them getting ready in the morning to moving on to a, a, an outdoor ceremony where they're gonna read handwritten promises to each other. Also show you the different kit that I'm using that's gonna allow me to travel super lightweight up into the mountains and tell this unique personal love story. So throughout the day, I'm going to be sharing some tips and best practices of how I work directly with my couples and what kit that I'm using. I'd love to see what you create with the advice that I'm going to share with you today. So make sure you share with the hashtag WexHowTo. So I'm just going to quickly run through which kit I brought with me. Uh, so I wanted to travel really light, managed to fit everything in this little backpack. I've got two Lumix S5 two bodies, and I've only packed three of their 1.8 prime lenses. So I've got the 35 mil, the 50 mil, and the 85. Luckily, I'm able to go handheld with the stabilization in these cameras, keeps everything super smooth. So I use the 35 mostly because it's the focal length that resembles the look of the of what you see with your, with your eye. The 50, I generally tend to use for more detailed shots, so when they're going to be writing their, their vow books and things like that, it'd be really nice to get in with some nice bokeh. The 85, I'm going to be putting on a travel tripod that I brought with me, just to get a secondary angle. Another thing to mention, as, as I am by myself, with the S5 II, not only is it a great video camera, it is also really good for stills. So just so I can get some content for social media, the suppliers involved with their wedding, and also for my thumbnails and things like that, I can easily switch it to photo mode and get some really nice 24 megapixel stills as well. So I've also brought a couple of other bits in my backpack, just spare batteries, a power bank, and also some wireless microphones. So when it comes to the ceremony later, I'm going to be micing the guys up just so I can get some really nice clear audio. And that audio is going to be in Spanish, but it's going to be a really nice way of telling the story from start to finish. So I'm about to go meet the guys in the hotel where they're getting ready. I'm going to show you how I capture the morning details of them preparing for their wedding day, taking some of their details and accessories that they brought with them, and putting that all together, what lenses I'm going to be using and how I shoot those bits. So yeah, let's go get started. So I've got all of the guys' accessories, the stationery, a couple of bits of jewellery and their detailed bits. And I'm gonna look for the best light in this wedding ceremony area to lay them out and do some really cute detailed shots. So I'm gonna be using the 35 for that. Um, I'm gonna be able to get some both video and photo. And yeah, so I'm gonna start looking for the best light. So I can already see this little table over here, which I think will be really nice. Basically, with weddings, you're always going to want to make sure that you're looking for the best light. Making sure there's no overhead lights on and using as much available natural light as possible. So I've got all of their bits and pieces here. So these are their vow books. I've also got some perfume, their bow ties, their rings. So I'm just going to arrange these into a nice accessory detail shot. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out their vow books and I'm going to place the rings, the cufflinks and the bow tie all around that to create a beautiful accessory detail shot which is going to be a really key important part of their memories. Yeah I'm happy with that. 
it looks really cute. So normally I'd shoot these detail shots from above using a gimbal to get some nice kind of parallax movement as I'm moving around the accessories. But I wanted to keep things simple with my setup today. So I'm gonna go completely handheld and just kind of gently rock on the spot. I've got the stabilization turned on, the e-stabilization turned on as well. So I'm just gonna use this 35 at f1.8 to make a really nice shallow depth of field just to get some nice, different, slow-moving angles of their details. So I've got a nice variety of top-down shots, some to the side, some with a little bit of movement, some keeping mostly still. Just to have a little bit of variety when I go into post-production, I can also add stabilization on in post. I can do some zooms as well, just to animate the inanimate objects, just to bring that to life. So I'm just here in the guys' room where they're getting ready uh, before we head up to the mountains later for their sunset ceremony. We've picked a really nice bright room with lots of natural light, which is really, really important. It is almost too bright, so we have pulled the curtains too just to help diffuse that light. And I've also got a diffusion filter on the front of my lens, which is also an ND filter, which is gonna help me utilize the light and create some nice silhouette effects. Um, we're gonna be having them get ready into their suits. So I'm gonna be capturing shots like them helping each other do their bow tie up, helping them do their shirt up, some aftershave shots. And they're also gonna be writing their vows in the vow books, um, just ready to read their promises to each other later on. So with video, it's really important to tell a story. Whether I decide to edit that in more of a chronological order or I'm gonna play around in the edit and put things in different places just to add a bit of drama. With, with my edits, I like to bring the most dramatic parts of the video to the beginning to really help capture my audience's attention. So it's just all about capturing different parts of their story so that you've got as much content as you need to piece it together later to make a really emotional film. So I'm just gonna run through my settings real quick. So normally I would shoot in 6K open gate mode, which gives me a four by three aspect ratio, which means if I'm gonna be um, putting clips of it on social media or YouTube, I've got the four by three aspect ratio to work with. I can then create uh, nine by 16 versions, also zoom in, and create a nice widescreen version as well. Today I'm actually gonna be shooting in Cinema 4K. That gives me the benefit of 422. My settings for the actual video settings, I guess are kind of controversial. So we're in a PAL region, which means that the, the base frames per second would be 25 frames a second. I actually changed my camera to NTSC uh, region and switched to 30 frames a second because when I'm editing it in a 25 frames a second timeline, it means that I can slow the footage down by about 20%. And it just gives me a little bit more of a kind of dreamy motion by slowing it down by 20%. The downside of shooting in 30 frames a second in a PAL area is any lights are gonna be flickering. So instead of sticking to the 180 degree rule to make sure the shutter speed is nice and smooth, I actually just switch it to 216 degrees and that eliminates any kind of flickering with indoor lights. So it's the video, the, the final video is gonna be in not quite slow motion, it's gonna be in real time, but with just a little bit of 20% slow motion where the 30 has been slowed down to 25. I think it's a good compromise to be able to keep the full frame with no crop and still being able to have a little bit of slow motion just so it looks nice and dreamy. So when I am shooting, to give a bit more movement, I kind of switch the weight between my left leg and my right leg. I don't really know, notice that I'm doing it. It's just uh, become a bit of a habit. So I'm kind of swaying a bit like this. Um, the stabilization is working really smooth. So it does almost look like I'm on a gimbal, but still with a bit more of a realistic kind of movie vibe. So yeah, I'm just rocking from left to right just to add a bit more movement into the video. So I'm working with that window light. So if you guys want to just do up his, his buttons again for me, just to get a bit more of a, a wider shot 
And these guys, they're not professional models. These guys are a real couple. So it's nice to be able to give them friendly instructions, always keeping everything kind of jokey and just making sure everyone's having fun so that they feel super comfortable. And the more comfortable they are, the more natural they're gonna look on video. So one thing to remember when you're working with your clients is there is a real, I guess, getting that balance between staging some shots that your clients are hoping to see and expect, but also making sure you're not too overbearing. So I am giving the guys hints and suggestions of things that I think are gonna look nice and that I know have worked well with previous couples. Um, but at the same time, if anything, comes occurs naturally that I think is cute I might make them repeat it for the video again um, but also always ensure that your couple are having fun and that they're feeling confident so I've just instructed the guys now we're going to do a shot in the mirror of them helping put their bow ties on just really enjoying themselves so it's just getting that balance between giving them suggestions but also letting things happen naturally as well because as much as I'm seeing this from a filmmaker's perspective, I'm also seeing this from this, this wedding as a, from an emotional perspective and what kind of memories I'm gonna be giving them. So I don't want it to look totally forced. I want it to be natural and for them to look back on the video and go, that's us. So I'm gonna be protecting the highlights most of the time in the skin tone. So I am, in some cases, making the guys more silhouetted because I don't want the light to look super, super blown out. Um, I'm kind of doing a bit of variation, to be honest with you. So sometimes I'm letting the window really blow out. Other times I'm kind of controlling that and um, making it a bit darker. So I'm probably underexposing a lot more than I normally would, but I feel like, I feel like that adds kind of to the, the mood of it as well. So I've got these beautiful vow books custom printed with their names and wedding day on from Page & Co. And I'm gonna get a shot of the guys handwriting their promises to each other so that later on they can read those as part of their ceremony. And it's, yeah, just a really nice additional element to the storytelling. Um, so I put them in somewhere that is not too bright. Where, where I originally had in mind um, is now completely overexposed. The sun has hit that really hard. So I've just moved a few things around, got them in a nice uh, flat lighting. It's really nice and flattering. I'm just gonna get some shots I've been writing and some close-up shots of the pen writing the vows and yeah, just go from there. So I've just put a 50 mil 1.8 just to add a bit more of a cropped in look, just to make it a little bit more personal. Also really like the bokeh that this one, this uh, this 50mm 1.8 gives me, especially for detail shots like the handwriting. There are some bits where the autofocus is kind of tracking the hand movement. So if I half press the shutter, that locks the autofocus from moving. So I'm just able to keep my finger on the shutter just to keep it from switching around and being distracting. So with these types of shots, I'm just kind of getting 20 seconds or so of each angle, then moving on to something different. When people are writing, it's also a really good idea to get shots over people's shoulders as well, just to give a bit more of a first person view. So we've come back to this beautiful lake um, where the guys are gonna have their ceremony and read their promises to each other that they wrote earlier in the hotel. We've come to this lake because it's a really special place to these guys. They actually do lots of rock climbing and walking and this lake is really special to them. So it was a, a key place for them to have their ceremony together. So one of the issues that I face when 
I'm shooting outdoors is the changing light. I can see the, there's like snow up on the mountains here. We've got reflections on the water. So dynamic range is something that I'm gonna have to think about. Um, thankfully with this camera's 14 plus stops of dynamic range when I'm using the V-Log setting, that will mean that I'll be able to retain a lot of the detail in the highlights. One of the things that I think about when I'm shooting in V-Log is the fact that to the eye, the colors are quite washed out and naturally it's a, a very flat profile that helps me capture those levels of dynamic range. This camera in the, the version two, the S5 II, has actually introduced a LUT loading feature and that opens up a couple more options. That means that I can not only load a LUT uh, via SD card straight into the camera to preview what it's gonna look like in Rec. 709, but it also means that I can load my own creative LUTs on so I can get an idea of how the picture is gonna look in post. I'm gonna be shooting a few stills just for my own social media purposes, thumbnails, and also to hand over the suppliers for their social media content as well. So I'm definitely not a photographer by any means, but I'm just able to switch straight out of video mode into photo mode just to grab a few stills as well. So I'm just gonna flip the camera around into vertical because I love to be able to get some vertical content for Instagram stories. And I know that I'm gonna turn this into a reel, so being able to just spin it around like that and start recording is amazing. Okay, guys, are you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Go! Okay, so the sun is about to drop, so now it's time to get these guys in position, ready to read each other their promises to one another. Um, so the light's dropping, got to be quick. Only got one chance at this because once the light's gone, that's it. So I'm going to not talk while I do this because I'm going to have them reading to each other. So I can't really interrupt what they're saying. So I'm going to set the 85 up on my second camera body on a tripod so that I've got a secondary angle. I'm going to put a couple of wireless mics and kind of hide them under their outfits. And um, I'll catch up with you after it's all over. So that's us done for the day. It's getting a bit chilly now. So I'm gonna head back to the car. As I head back and take my gear back to the hotel, I wanted to give you a few tips on how you can get started in wedding videography. So one thing that I would definitely say to start with is the couple portraits. The couple portraits are what really elevate my wedding films and are my favorite thing to capture. So if you've got any friends that are getting married soon or have recently got married, why don't you ask them to get their wedding outfits on and take them down somewhere like the beach or the woods and just have a practice with different lenses and learning how to work and interact with your couples just to help put them at ease. Another tip that I really want to stress as well is uh, waiting for the right light. If it's too bright, skins are gonna be blown out and it's not gonna be very flattering. So waiting until you've got some, some nice, low, soft light like this is perfect. And then when you're finally ready to take the jump into a, a, a big, proper wedding, definitely take the time to learn your kit beforehand because with weddings, you only get one chance and you really don't want to mess anything up when it's somebody's wedding. So taking the time to learn the different settings. Hopefully you've learned some of the, the tips from me today. I'm really grateful for the amazing autofocus on this camera. So making sure that your autofocus settings and your picture profile settings are all good before you start is really gonna help you feel a lot more relaxed and at ease when you're shooting a big wedding with lots of guests and everything like that. But having a couple portrait session is a great place to start. It'll be great practice for when you decide to, to jump into the bigger weddings. I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. I hope you found some of these tips helpful and don't forget to use the hashtag WexHowTo if you're gonna be trying out any of the techniques that I've shown you today. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
Hace cuatro años todo cambió. Y no fue precisamente para algo malo, sino todo lo contrario. Para algo súper positivo. Llegó a mi vida una persona que me hizo revolucionar. Me dio confianza, me dio bienestar. Como ya sabes, para mí eres increíble y súper necesario. Hoy todos los días de mi vida te quiero. Te quiero cerca, te quiero a mi lado, te quiero bien, te quiero sano. Pero sobre todo, te quiero eterno. Oye, qué bonito, por favor. <risa>